God gives us authority, and he wants us to use that authority, like a policeman who puts on his jacket and clothes and becomes an authority. He takes upon himself a different air. He puts on the uniform of a policeman. Before that he was sleeping in maybe in his pyjamas. He's just a man. Then he has children. He's a father. He has a wife. He's a husband. He is many things, but when he puts on that uniform, he's a policeman, and people better listen to him, because he represents the law, and he speaks not on his own behalf, but on behalf of the law of the land. So also we are fathers and husbands and people in our normal lives, but when we put on the robes, the robes, the invisible robes, that God has prepared for us to love him and minister for him, then we inflict tremendous damage on the evil one. The Bible says we will destroy all his works. We cannot come against him as a man. We cannot come against him as a husband. Even if we want to heal our family, we cannot heal them as husbands and fathers. We have to heal them as priests. Priests take authority. Priests are not under the same heading as a father and a husband. Though they may be a father and a husband, they are not father and husband when it comes to dealing with sickness and disease. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus Christ gave his disciples power and authority over all demons and to heal all diseases. Now has he rescinded that, or does he still give that to us? The Bible says he still does that. What are you going to believe? In Mark chapter 9, and uh, there is a story about a epileptic boy who was dumb, couldn't speak, and deaf, and he kept getting thrown into the fire and into the water. Epilepsy is still the same today. Jesus called it a demon. Today we have called it a mental aberration or sickness or um, something treatable by just drugging somebody, making them drowsy. <laughs> Never got a remedy for it, but we've got a way to stop it from um, uh, symptomatically manifesting. I was called to a farm once. There was a boy there, well, a young man, about 21, who was, had been a Christian but suddenly went all weird. He grew long hair, he was dirty, he was disheveled. He was a farm laborer, but he started to uh, do strange things with young, young children, like hanging them from trees and things. And he became a very big danger and a liability, but the farmer didn't want to get rid of him because he used to be a very good worker. And so they heard of me and they called me down there. I got all the farm workers into one room. I explained this, the simple story of Jesus Christ, the gospel. I kept asking the Lord, what do you want me to do? At the end, he said, be quiet. I stood there quietly. All of these people, maybe 30 or 40, sat quietly. It was embarrassing. God didn't tell me to say or do anything. Just quiet. People shuffled around after a while. Many minutes went by. Just quiet, said the Lord. Then came a feeling on top of my head like somebody was rubbing oil on top of my head, pouring it, actually. That's the feeling it came, and it went down inside me, slowly, taking maybe 30 seconds to reach my stomach area. But when it reached my stomach area, something shot out of me, and that young man, who'd been sitting quietly in his chair with long dreadlock hairs, hanging down from his head, looking like he didn't know whether what time of day it was or what day it was, suddenly exploded. 
and leap into the air with a shriek and a scream. People ran out of the building. They were so terrified. I just stood still. I knew God was at work. I knew it because he came down from heaven through my head and into my stomach. And from my stomach he went out, rivers of living water, and hit that boy, knocked something flying from inside his mind. And that boy was made totally well. He instantly looked a thousand times cleaner than he had moments before. His eyes were bright. He was sound in his mind. He looked around like he had been dazed for some time. In fact, it had been months. And he became totally normal. He cut his hair. He went back to work. He never did strange or weird things anymore. I can tell of many demonic things. People who suddenly, instantly catch on fire. People who go invisible. Witchcraft. People who speak. I knew a woman who spoke, uh, went into a car crash and came out speaking Hebrew. A, an African woman from a, from a village who knew nothing of these things. He, the strange things happen in the spirit realm. But God has given us authority over all these things. Not just authority, but power. That power that came down my head into my stomach it's the anointing of God, the anointing oil. And it smashed that demonic thing right out of that boy without a word from me or any command, without laying hands on him, without casting it out with a word. That thing was knocked flying because of my faith and because God could use me at that time to do that. God gives us all authority, if we will just believe it, if we will stand our ground and believe that these things are real, believe that there's a something in that boy, that young man, that's possessing him, a real being that needs to be cast out. I believed that with all my heart, and I stood my ground, waited for the power to come to cast it out, waited for the angel to give it a real smack on the jaw and knock it flying out of that young boy. I knew God wouldn't let me down. I knew these things existed. I knew the power of God was available to me. And I knew God would hear me because I was doing it in his name. All these things I knew and I still know. And I know this. All of you have been given this authority. You have the name of Jesus. You can stand your ground. You can command things to come out, demons and powers. You can heal all diseases if you believe. But you see, you grow in authority. Well, you grow in confidence in using it. It doesn't just come on you. You've got to start somewhere. You've got to first of all believe it to the extent that you will operate in it. You've got to believe that there are spirits and things like that causing these terrible things to happen in life. And you've got to challenge them and stand your ground. Many other times God used me to cast out demons and to heal sicknesses. And he did it through words coming out of my mouth. But not always, sometimes by me touching them. Sometimes by me just getting close to them, they would suddenly get healed. You see, the power would come out of me, power to heal the sick. It will come out of you too. The Bible says all believers are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and these signs follow those who believe. In my name they speak in tongues, they cast out demons, they heal the sick. These signs follow those who believe. And these signs follow those who don't believe. The signs are nothing. You will keep your demon, you will not get healed, and you will not speak in tongues. These are the signs that follow unbelievers. The signs that follow believers are you will heal the sick, lay hands on them, 
cast out demons and speak in other tongues. Every believer can do it. You've just got to try. God bless you.